Hello, today we're going to look at NOSTA, notes and other stuff transmitted by relays. We're going to be looking at, in particular at the NOSTA development kit, which if you see my other videos with the BDK, the Bitcoin development kit, this is along the similar lines. It's got some good tutorials, which whether you're interested in NOSTA or not, it's just uh, a good a good series of small tutorials which are quite quick and easy to do and you get some feedback because what actually happens is you will write some code which will let's go through it we create a new project in rust cargo new cargo run just comp check it compiles um, so that's just starting the project generate a key pair so if you've seen my recent videos on digital signatures this is relevant again so whether I've done a video on Bitcoin, Nostra, or anything else which requires digital signatures, it's really useful to understand how they work and be able to do the code to generate them. Here, they've shown you how to generate a key pair, and they provide a link to a website where you can go and generate your own. I think it's probably better to, well, let me explain what I've done. I've used a client for NOSTA. So NOSTA is protocol and it's got different uh, site, different apps, different for your mobile phone, different desktop interface, uh, GUI. So this is iris.to, there's primal.net, there's, there's several. So just choose whichever one you you prefer. It's not like Twitter where you have to use the Twitter interface. Nost is a protocol, so you, there's numerous different clients that you can choose. You've got Hamster, Iris, Coracle, Nostros, Nostra, and so on. Um, anyway, back to the Rust side of things. I'll show you shortly where I've actually... What I did was I had in my settings uh, somewhere... Export keys, is it? Yeah. You can see that's truncated. So it's me showing you this is not a problem because you see the three dots in the middle. <laughs> um, I can copy and paste from here, which is what I've done. So I've copied and pasted into... Right, I'll give you a little preview. So I've copied and pasted into a .env file and then I've read, I've read my private key out of the .env file because I don't want my private key to be in my main.rs code. I'll get back to this in a bit because this is Codeberg, which is going to be going forward. I'm going to use it instead of GitHub. I'll cover that in your course. So private key. You either generate private key from this link, which you're welcome to do, or you can, for instance, sign up to iris.to and then you could get your key. However, the key here is in hex. The standard key format is not hex. When you see it, it's more, uh, let me show you again. It's got nsec for your private key and it's got npub for your public key typically. So what I've had to do in the code, I'll show you in a second, I've had to convert it. So I convert the public key to batch 32. Um, so I've deviated, I've gone off, I've gone off paste a bit. However, one way or another, you will need to have a private key in this format. And if you're following along to the tutorial, probably follow the tutorials just rigidly to start with, and then you can kind of stop modifying it and in, in using your own keys and your NPUB and converting it and so on. So add Rust NOSTA dependency. Nostr SDK. So if you've seen my other videos, you'll you'll recognise the kind of the, the style of the website, and it's it's pretty much the same as same format and the same kind of user friendliness as Rust BDK. So B for Bitcoin, S for sorry, yeah, BDK Nostr SDK. I don't know why they didn't just call it NDK. Maybe that was taken. So at the import, we're importing everything because we're using Prelude with the star. 
We're going to make it async so that the code can continue while it's waiting for responses. Now, the reason why it's async especially needs to be async is because we're using relays. So the R in Nostr um, means it's transmitted by relays. What's a relay? A relay um, So a relay can be, you could run a relay if you want. A relay is basically a computer which is running the Nostr software, which you can then talk to. And then if somebody else is connected to that relay, basically it's like, uh, yeah, it's just someone passing on the message. It's, a, it's like a middleman, if, if, I, if I'm allowed to say that these days. Right. So async fn main returns a result with a unit type and um, we're just doing okay with the uh, type unit so that's that's nice just run that to get started you're just returning a, that will return okay that will compile right so the load key the key which you've created following the tutorial that'll be the key that you've created on this website so you just go here you just accept that and then generate vanity key pair and there we go that'll be your public key with the b at the start and that'll be your private key so then you, you would do copy private key and then in the code sorry in the code you would then set it as a constant in quotes i always i remember to put it in quotes when i do it in rust but when i do my dot use it in a dot emv file i always have to think oh is it does it have quotes or not and obviously it, it doesn't um so yeah nost and tokyo because we want it to be async asynchronous so that it can carry on with the code while it's waiting for the responses from the relays um yes yeah, so we got down to there load the key so then we secret key from string so that comes from the nostr sdk once we've got the secret key, we can then generate, uh, oh, sorry, the key's new, passing the secret key, and then obviously we, we've got our pair of keys. Um, so let's update print line to include your public key and ensure that it matches the one you created using the web tool. Your full program should look like this, except with your private key. So yeah, just paste in your private key there where I've just highlighted. Um, so my keys is kind of the the pair of keys the public and private key so you do my keys dot public key and that's going to print out the public key first time you run it create a client and add a relay so all that's doing is generating your keys and printing the keys or generating a pair of keys and printing your public key so this is the whole point of Nostr. It uses relays to receive, store, and query events, and then we use a client type to access a relay. Um, so we call connect. So what we do is we add the relays. The relays you can get from here. If you can do a quick Google search and you can search for relays. So um, if you click on if you click on one, so there you go wss forward slash they've all got slightly different names this um obviously dns which will resolve to an ip address wss so there we go just just find one sometimes they won't work so just keep going and, and until you find some that work they've specified relay.house and relay.damas.io Damas is one of the companies which make the app which runs on Apple iOS, so it, that will that should have quite a, a good uptime. On um, the Nostra Watch, it shows you the uptime uh, status page. So there's one in Spain, for instance, and you can see it's, it's 
connected to the relay latency and so on so you can see thus you can see the health of the relay and you can add several so you don't just have to stick to two so then you connect and then you await because you don't you have to use await because it's uh is it a few it's a future isn't it so to learn more about async and await in rust see see full stop okay um Published text notes. So this is the whole point. This is equivalent to, if you've used Twitter, this would be equivalent to the message is effectively your tweet, which would be your, your little text message. So that's the text message. And it's basically saying, hello, Nostra, my public key is. And then it's using the variable, which is just, it's basically advertising to all of the other users what your public key is so they can add you and they can follow you so although this is text there's other things which you can do with nostra so i i would i'm going to go away and read about all the other things which you can do because obviously that's going to give lots of ideas to what you can actually additionally do with the code here you're just publishing the text so much like the kind of like the bitcoin development kit you you create a transaction so if you think about that, that's like creating a transaction and that's publishing it. So that's effectively broadcasting. You're broadcasting it to the network. And then you see this back with an event ID and that's equivalent to, that would be like your transaction ID in Bitcoin, really. I'm probably drawing too many parallels where they don't really exist, but sometimes it's nice just to uh, try and, compare things against what you already know so to con to retrieve the event you can do filters so filter new and then you can pass the id and then you can pass out for instance the event id um you have to wait a second or i, I set my time out to be i think five seconds after i'd added a few relays um and then you, you create a vector of the events so if you've if you find several messages which um, match your filter. So here we go. These are the filters. You've got authors, kinds, events, pub keys, hashtags. So hashtags similar to Twitter. So, you know, it, 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 if there's loads of tweets with uh, hashtag, uh, you know, football or ha hashtag Bitcoin, you, you, you'd find all of those. Um, I don't know what the li it says limit none. I, I would imagine you could put kind of 10 there just to get the top 10 posts. Um, and there's the rep a link to the repo. And this was last updated on uh, 23rd of March, 2023. So it's it works as of today, which is December 2023. So I can confirm it works. Um, this Let me just show you me testing it. Um, now, before I do that, I'll just mention, so I'll put the EMV file. Just remember the EMV file needs to be at the same level. So it needs to be at the same level as cargo. And um, don't put the EMV file inside SRC like I did. Um, so, yeah, then I committed it and put it onto Codeberg. Codeberg basically aren't harvesting your information and gathering it to train their machine learning and so on. I, Codeberg is a not-for-profit organization, which I would typically support over Microsoft anytime. So this was Jack Dorsey. There are only three truly censorship-resistant technology at scale for today, Tor, Bitcoin, and Nostra. All are currently niche, showing most of the world doesn't actually care about censorship. Granted, these technologies aren't yet accessible, easy to use, but they will be. But if you can write Rust code, then either you can build something or just even just learn enough about it to be able to um, write code that works with it. So uh, I'll just quickly get back to the code. So I'll put the link to this code in the notes for the video. So what I did was I got my private key from Iris. So that was generated when I signed up to Iris. 
I copied it with the clipboard. That then made its way into the .env file. And then I imported it. But the difference here is that I had to bring it in and set it as private underscore key lowercase. And I had to extract keys from. So basically that's getting... Um, so my keys my keys dot public so keys is always a pair public and private keys so i'm getting the public key and i'm converting it to bec32 and then the bec32 key is then what i can um, i can print out and that then matches um the, the standard format that it would be expecting to use in the rest of the code and my keys there so um, from hex or bec32 just have a play around with that. That, that this is how you can convert to bec32 and then you can print your bec32 and my keys which are from your private key and your private key is um, I forget which way around it is yeah, the private key is the BEC32 one. Um, anyway, then we get down to here, which is your client, and then you pass in ampersand, so you obviously you don't want to consume my key, so you, you borrow. And um, this is where we, we do the client add. We're adding, those are the two relays from the tutorial. I've just added a third based in my country. And then you do client connect, and once you've got a connection, to the client can then publish the message and that's where you I've commented that out but basically that's where you add your filters and then you can go and filter to check that your message is actually being published let me just show you so one thing to bear in mind is when you test it your test messages uh, yeah your test messages won't can't be deleted um, I say that let me just look at notification messages there we go messages I have read that you can't delete the messages but um, Yeah, that was me testing. So uh, there's two tests. I don't know if it's. Hmm. I don't know if you can delete them or not. Uh, there is a delete button. But when you delete it. I have read that they can't. Because it's all transmitted over relays, I believe the relays would still have a copy. So. I don't know if they're just marked as visible or not visible. I don't know. Um, one thing you can also do on Nostra is you can send zaps. And zap is basically some uh, Satoshis, which are very, very small units of Bitcoin. I think there's, is it? 10, 10 billion in, in one Bitcoin? I forget. But if I send, I can send some, if I send 50, uh, who am I sending to? No, I'll be sending to myself. I won't do that. But um, if you use something called Albi, get Albi. You see, I've got some, I've sent 50 sats an hour ago. And you can receive. So if you want to, if you want somebody to send you some, you, you just click on receive. And you create a lightning invoice. And then you would say 100 Satoshis. Um, just put in Bob there. And then you just create an invoice. That's, and then somebody could see that, scan that on their phone. And if, if they had uh, a Lightning wallet with some credit on, some Satoshis, they would scan that. And then they could they could automatically, effectively automatically by scanning it, they could actually then send you the the Lightning. Lightning is basically very, this typically Satoshis. You, you probably wouldn't send a whole Bitcoin, Bitcoin over Lightning because as of recording a whole bitcoin is approximately 35,000 pounds so yeah 
where's a satoshi um 162 satoshis are equivalent to 0.07 dollars so there we go um so it's good just to experiment and as is jack dorsey said it's just um, a great way of decentralizing communication um avoiding harsh censorship because one person's <sighs> protection is another person's Mm, silencing should we say if you want to learn more about lightning there's a great site here and what i've just showed you was albi and this uses albi and it's i mean it's even using um this is amazing it's got scroll to pay so as you scroll down it actually wants you to pay to read the rest of the article uh so you can see as i yeah as i try and scroll down this pops up basically says you need to pay a bit more to read the rest. So now I'm going to pay one Satoshi to the website. It's just paid. Um, and now I can kind of scroll down a bit more. And now it's asking me to pay again. So every page you scroll down, it asks you for one Satoshi, which is um, the tiniest, tiniest amount at the moment. Hmm. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in um kind of open source and oh, i just want to close that now it's keep <laughs> it's keep it keeps nagging me to pay so yeah if you're interested in open source and kind of decentralization then i'd encourage you to and just the rust tutorials in general are just good for learning rust um so you've got you've got i lost some of the um yeah, there we go. So docs, tutorials, blog, Rust documentation, Nosta, hello Nosta. Um, so yeah, Nosta, very interesting. Um, Lightning payments, also very interesting. And Codeberg, yeah, so rather than um, using GitHub, which who knows, one day you might have to pay to use it, I don't know. But um, I think what what's safe to say is that Microsoft will be training uh, GitHub Copilot and lots of things to replace us all with. They'll be training the, those using our our human code. So, yeah, use um, Codeberg instead. It's free. It's open source. Um, sort of not for profit and all that. So, I, I I don't know. Sometimes these things are kind of a double edged sword, aren't they? And that not all that glitters is gold, but um, I think it's just good just to try different Git providers anyway, because Git does not equal GitHub, just like um, Bitcoin is not crypto. So um, yeah, the other thing I just used was uh, Colorize there. I used from string, the like traits. Um, yes, oh, then we, so, uh, use standard time duration and Tokyo time sleep. Um, particularly when you're testing, you, it's quite common to use those. If you, particularly if you want to prove multi-threading, for instance, or just anything that's asynchronous, you can put in your kind of your own. It's like um, time dot sleep in Python. A little bit more of a bit wordy, but there we go. So thanks for watching. If it's of interest, then I will do more videos on Nostra. As it is, I, this might, I'm, I'll probably or most likely go back to Bitcoin Development Kit. But I just wanted to kind of um, just show this and yeah, just see if anybody else has been using it. If anybody else has done anything clever with Nostra and Rust. Um, Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon.